this environment cleans everything out that's not meant to be there. It cleans out weak things, it cleans out dead things. It, it opens up the door for a new crop of plants and for vibrant growth. And so that's what a rainforest is all about. But as soon as you take a rainforest and you cut the trees down, what you end up with is a desert. And that produces a completely different society, completely different personality of the people who live there, and enormous austerity, you know, where before there was abundance. And so that's why we're doing what we have to do to preserve the rainforest, because we do not want that austerity. We're not used to it. And so we're not going to adapt to it either. We insist on abundance. We insist on diversity. Lots of birds. Lots of species of plants. Lots of insects. <laughs> <laughs> lots of pollinating agents to take care of all the flowers. Yeah, because some bees maybe like, you know, the purple flower. Other bees like the yellow flower. You know, it's just like us. You know, we like, you know, a skinny girl, a fat girl. Who do you know? You know, and so, you know, you're a pollinator, you know, you need a big field to work in, right? Because you're not going to necessarily jump at the first, at the first uh, the one you see. And so, you know, the, the natural world follows us. We are very much a part of it. And when you remember that, it's going to definitely give you a point of reference to figure out what's best to do. Because as soon as you abandon your eventual individuality and your preferences, then you're going to be cloned down. You're going to be brought down into a product that, well, this is what we have today, sir, you know, you're going to have to take the basic item here, you know, say, mm, really? That's about what do I do? Or you can buy some Viagra asshole, you know, there's always solutions for this. Well, I don't think I'm ready for that, you know, I would rather go somewhere else with it, you know, I'd rather, you know, you know, find something I'm actually attracted to, you know, before I, you know, put my pedal to the metal here. And so I think that, you know, people have to begin insisting on that again. Mm. Because if they don't, they're going to not be able to reconstruct the thread that they lost a long time ago when they started inventing and creating industrial, military, counterproductive, anti-ecological governments and policies that are basically destined to a very, the very, very early demise. In other words, they're not tuned toward thousands of years. They come in in a very advantageous place, but they're going to bring it right down. And that's what we're trying to avoid, by just being true to who we are as a species. What are we here for? You know? And what makes us shine? What makes us smile in the morning? <laughs> what makes us happy, you know? And, and so we have all that dissonance, like what we were talking about this morning, you know, the dissonance. We can, okay, well, your mom and dad are fighting. Okay, mom and dad are fighting. So what do you do? You start lying to your mom about your dad. You start lying to your dad about your mom. And you're only 12 years old. So you keep on lying to people all your life. But the problem is when you get to be in your mid-20s, you don't know who you are anymore. Because you lie to everybody, it's a reflex. And what do you do when you lie? You put yourself down. You say, I'm not as good as you, so I'm going to lie to you because I want your help. So I'm going to tell you something that's not true. Now, the minute you say, no, this is what's true. You know, mom's fine. There's nothing wrong with her. You just don't see her right, you know. But dad's fine. There's nothing wrong with him. You don't see him right. As soon as you say that, you put yourself right up on top. In other you become the counselor of your family. Yeah. Okay? So, think about that. Never lie. It disempowers you. Tell the truth. There's nothing to be afraid of. Believe me, it always wins out in the end. I promise you. Just tell the truth. Because if you don't like it, then come back when you're ready to hear it again. <laughs> Believe me, they'll crawl back. I promise you. When you're talking about power plants, when you're talking about very powerful, delicate, and personality charged <laughs> individuals. They need just the right conditions or they don't perform. And so that's what happens with these. These guys are stunted because they have too much sunlight. They don't like it. It's too hot. 
Okay. So they're going to be, you know, tiny little guys for a while. Now there's a couple of them who have more shade and they've gotten bigger. You see like this one over here. But the ones over there are growing and they're three times as big as these even though they were planted six months ago. So they're responding to the place we've chosen for them to live. And so that's very important to understand. As you go up in your spiritual life, you become more eloquent, you become more clear in what you want to do and what you're supposed to do. You're going to have to also pay attention to the quality of your environment, to the quality of your life, and to the quality of the company you keep. Because if you keep the wrong company, it's going to inevitably erode your capacity to complete with your destiny and to complete with the things you want to do on a daily and hourly basis. So you have got to maintain that and realize that you're not a robot. You're made out of flesh and bone and your emotions, your sentiments. You've got a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes. And if they're not right, then they're going to distract you from what you're supposed to do. It's the same thing with a high power plant. That's why we are very much a part of this natural world. We have a place in it, a very high place. But it's a high place that has to be recognized as just that. If we don't take the responsibility for our place, we lose it. It's simple as that. You know, if you don't rise to the occasion, you lose the occasion and the next occasion and the next one too. Okay, it's very important to keep that in mind. Now, we are, to a certain extent, guardians of this planet. We're people who are supposed to pay attention to taking care of other things. Plants and animals are not completely oblivious, as most people would, would have you believe. They know that we are here to protect them, to guide them, and to help them. And if they die, it's probably our fault. Okay, so they don't cut us any slack when we're not coming up because we want to be correct. We want to please the government. We want to please the Catholics. We want to please the Muslims. We want to please the Islam. We want to please the Unitarians. We want to please everybody but the fucking plants because we're here to take care of them. We're here to take care of the animals. We're here to take care of the planet. Why, did we, why were we given so much capacity intellectually? Why are we given so much capacity of manipulation? Well, precisely because we were put here with the hope that we could actually do something worthwhile. Now, when we don't do it, can you blame the things? Because they're not just stupid plants. They're smart plants. And also, the animals are not stupid animals. They're very smart animals. Can you blame them for being a little belligerent? For them not liking us that much? Or maybe putting us through the ringer when we actually come to them and say, can you give us some power and some insight? They say, you? You should have it already. You were born with it. What'd you do with it? Who'd you throw it away to? Why do I have to teach you? Why don't you have it in your pocket? Why aren't you doing your work? You were put here to help us. Now we've got to put you back on track. Okay? So imagine that, you know. You have got to know that you're not here just for fun. You're here to do something. And if you don't do it, well, you're not going to enjoy yourself very much. You're not going to be very appreciated. And you're going to be complaining. And when you die, you're going to know you haven't lived yet. Because you can't do what you came here for. It's as simple as that. So, try it once. You try it once. You try to rise to the occasion. Because your life is very important. The blessing you've been given, a human body, is an incredible blessing. And the planet you've been given to live on is an incredible blessing. Because you look around through the galaxy, you think you're going to find another one of these? No. Nope. There's no more rainforest. The rainforest on Saturn and Pluto disappeared. You know? <laughs> it's a high plateau. It used to be a cattle ranch. And uh, that's where... The soil is very fertile. It has a high water table. Water is easy to find here. You just have to dig a little hole and you find water. Okay, so these plants are in a beautiful environment for growing fast and healthy.
The Indians used to use that plant in order to go on hunting parties and to go on uh, war parties at night. Now, the beautiful thing about that plant, the reason why it has so much incredible power is because it has a lot of personality. Look at it. It's got a lot of complexity to it. Every leaf pattern is different, okay? They look like completely different families. They look like Rorschach patterns. They look like emblems of old European families that are hanging above the door. This is a powerful, powerful plant, and it has very strong colors. It's carrying colors that celebrate its strength and its vitality and also its insistence on showing who it is. They're not going to just sit back. They're going to actually express themselves. And then they're going to leave kids behind that are continue expressing themselves. And so that's a beautiful plant. It'll show you that the plant world is very much alive and very much congruent with the human species. We do the same thing. Okay? We go out and we buy clothes. We walk in a certain way. We learn how to speak. We learn how to look at people. We learn how to look away from people. We learn how to do all kinds of things that plant does the exact same thing. It celebrates itself and it enjoys itself every day. And that's why it caught my attention. And that's why I fell in love with it. And I have it all over the place. Because it's just too intelligent to leave behind.